Well, it's time for a look at what new films are streaming and in theaters this weekend. Let's bring in Richard Krauss. There he is. Good afternoon, my friend. You know, I, I'm looking at the list of films that you brought to us uh, this uh, for today, and I'm curious, Rich, what would you do if J Lo asked you to marry you? Well, that's the whole premise of the movie <laughs> Marry Me, which is in theaters this weekend. And, you know, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of rom-coms, uh, but I don't know whether it's the pandemic that softened me up a little bit or whether it's just this movie in particular. Uh, but I kind of like this. So J-Lo plays uh, a riff on herself, really. She's playing a big pop star, huge social media, uh, media following. Uh, she is very popular in advertising campaigns, top of the charts. And she's going to marry her pop star boyfriend live on stage and then live stream it to 20 million people around the world. When she finds out just before they're about to sing their new big hit single, Marry Me, and then actually get married, she finds out that he's been cheating on her. She says the wedding's off until she sees Owen Wilson in the audience carrying a sign that says, Marry Me. And she says, all right, I'm going to take a chance. Let's do it. And they bring him up on stage and they get married. Now, this is a romantic comedy. I don't have to tell you anything more than that because we all know romantic comedies are not about the destination. They are about the journey. They're about how you get there. Is it fun? Yeah, it is. It's light. It's frothy. It's so light and frothy it threatens to kind of uh, float away into the clouds from time to time. But it's a rom-com. So you're looking for great clothes, lots of lifestyle porn, uh, and a bit of romance, and Marry Me delivers on all three of those things. So I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Not too bad. Let's talk about a Death on the Nile. Uh, from what I understand, same director as a Murder on the Orient Express, which was a fun movie. The question is, uh, is mm -hmm. this a fun one as well? Yeah, this is more of the same. It is directed by Kenneth Branagh, who also plays the Belgian detective uh, Hercule Perrault, uh, based on the Agatha Christie novel of the same name. Death in the Nile is the sequel to Murder on the Orient Express, and it's the same idea. It's a great big old-fashioned epic kind of murder mystery, all-star cast, people like Gal Gadot and Annette Benning are in here and lots of others. Uh, and one of them will be uh, proven to be the murderer by the time uh, the end credits roll. Takes a little while to get where it's going, but if you like that Agatha Christie style of mystery where everybody could be a suspect, everyone's got a reason to hate uh, the person that was killed, then you'll probably find something to like here. I found it just a little slow for my taste, but I gave it three out of five stars, and it's in theaters this weekend. I was hoping this third movie would be a documentary on the Jackson 5, but it's not. It's, uh, <laughs> we're talking about another rom-com. I want you back. Yeah, so it's the, the weekend before Valentine's Day. So traditionally, this is when rom-coms hit the theaters. This one happens to be on uh, Amazon Prime. And it is uh, really funny. This is Charlie Day. It's Jenny Slate. They play people uh, who are dating other people. Uh, Jenny Slate, as we see her, is dating Scott uh, Eastwood. And um, uh, Charlie Day is dating somebody else. They both get dumped right at the very beginning of the movie. And then when they meet, they come up with this plan where each other will infiltrate their exes' lives, try and break them up so that they realize, the exes realize how good they had it before. So it's kind of a funny premise. You've got two very funny actors here. And I like this movie because uh, it does what rom-coms do best. It has a kind of a predictable setup, but the journey along the way to the destination, to the happily ever after, is a fun one. So I give this one four out of five stars because it made me laugh quite a bit. And you'll find it on Amazon Prime Video. And Rich, this last one, also the name of a, of a song, but it has nothing to do with the Beatles. <laughs> No, it doesn't. This is Drive My Car, uh, nominated for four Academy Awards earlier this week. Uh, it is uh, Japan's entry uh, for Best International Feature, and it's a lovely movie. This is the story of two people who are lost in their lives, one uh, because of abuse, another because of uh, a marriage that ended uh, through death. When they get together as chauffeur and uh, the person who's being driven, uh, they start to relate to one another, and the older man and younger woman find that they have a lot in common in terms of trying to figure out their way through some very rough periods in their lives. This is a good movie that will uh, reward the patient 
It is three hours long. <laughs> Not a lot happens, but uh, as you get to know these people, you enjoy spending time with them. So I give it four to five stars, and it's in theaters right now. All good picks. Richard Krause, thank you so much. You have yourself a great weekend. Absolutely. You too, Jamie.